This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Right now, you can get a deep discount on a two-year plan at nordvpn.com slash foolishbaseball. It's September 14th, 2018, and Chris Davis is slumping. In fact, he's 0 for his last 16 at bats. And with both Davis and his Baltimore Orioles in the dumps, there isn't much to cheer about at Camden Yards. But Davis musters up something. In the second inning, he hits a double off James Shields, just over the glove of a shifted Yuan Moncada. He stands at second base, blissfully unaware of what will happen next. Chris Davis would go hitless for his next 54 bats, 62 plate appearances, and 210 days. Now that it's been a couple years since this unfortunate streak, we can view it with a newfound perspective. After all, Davis's 0 for 54 was 1 in a million, and you'll soon find out why that's no exaggeration. Chris Davis struck out 30 times over the course of his streak. That's a 48% K rate, but we're not going to focus on that. Strikeouts are bad, but they're an understandable type of bad. You can't get a hit if you don't hit the ball. That's pretty simple. So let's focus on everything else to see where it all went wrong. September 17th, bottom of the second versus the Blue Jays. Chris Davis bounces one off the pitcher, Ryan Barucki, who recovers to throw out Davis by a step. September 18th, bottom of the fourth. Aaron Sanchez bounces one off the toe of Davis. He reaches base safely on a hit by pitch, revealing that Davis does in fact have a solid corporeal form. He is not some sort of spirit, unable to physically interact with the world. If the baseball can hit him, he can hit the baseball. September 22nd versus the Yankees. I forgot Lance Lynn was on the Yankees. Anyways, Davis crushes a line drive 109 miles per hour, but it's caught by Glaber Torres. It's a tough break with the ball being so well struck. The streak could have ended right there, but it didn't. Top of the 10th, bases loaded, chance to be the hero, and Luke Voigt makes a diving catch. Another tough break. That was the last game Davis played in 2018. He finished with the lowest qualified batting average in modern MLB history, and he got paid $17 million to do it. Fast forward to Baltimore's opening series in 2019. Davis starts his second game of the year on an 0 for 21 streak, but makes good contact in his first at bat. Sadly, Brett Gardner hauls it in on the warning track. A few more feet and it would have exited Yankee Stadium, resulting in a much needed hit. The streak could have ended right there, but it didn't. In his next at bat, Chris Davis does something that is usually good for the old Babbitt luck. He hits an opposite field ground ball against a shifted defense. Unfortunately, it rolls to third baseman Miguel Andujar, who makes the play. In the Orioles' next series versus the Blue Jays, Davis walks with the bases loaded. It's not every day someone who's 0 for 27 gets an RBI. But what happens the next day is even more uncommon. With a runner on second and no outs, the Blue Jays elect to intentionally walk Davis once Javi Guerra falls behind in the count. It's not every day someone who's 0 for 30 gets intentionally walked. Bad luck struck again on April 3rd as Davis crushed a 105 mile per hour line drive right to Billy McKinney. No, seriously, right at him. He took one step. The streak could have ended right there, but it didn't. Then came the home opener, the first time Davis would face the Orioles crowd that year. In the sixth inning, Davis pushes James Paxton to a full count, but he strikes out and the fans begin to boo him. Ooh. Ooh. Well, they were in Baltimore, so I guess it sounded more like, boo, boo. Get it? Because of the accent. April 6th, bottom of the eighth, base is loaded. Surely this is the moment. Davis makes good contact, and it's fielded cleanly by Greg Bird. If that had gotten past him, it might have been scored as a hit. Instead, it's another out. April 8th versus the A's. You like lineouts to outfielders? Can I interest you in this one? Not your style? Alright, how about this bad boy? 
No? Still not good enough? Okay, here's my favorite. 103 off the bat, 346 feet, and caught by Robbie Grossman. Look at Davis's reaction. That's a man that just cannot catch a break. Two days later, Davis just got under one, sending Ramon Laureano close to the warning track. In the series finale, Davis crushes another ball, this time 105 miles per hour, but it's caught by Laureano 382 feet from home plate. The reaction is incredulous at this point. Sure, he's striking out nearly half the time throughout this streak, but something's got to give with these batted balls. Of course, defensive positioning is a factor. Marcus Simeon demonstrated the value of the shift on the very next at bat. April 12th in Fenway versus the Red Sox, and Davis has a pinch hit opportunity in the top of the ninth. Again, the shift works against him, as Eduardo Nunez catches a weird knuckling liner, ending the game. There it is. That's a small slice of what it's like to go 0 for 54. The streak was vanquished the very next day. Marcelo out of the full wind up. Davis is going to get one. They set into right field. And for Chris Davis, it's over, baby. We're not talking about it anymore. At long last, he found the outfield grass, collecting a two run single off Rick Porcello. The Ofer was over. Davis didn't shy away from the moment either. He asked for the ball. Why? Because he'd made history even if it was the dubious kind. His 0 for 54 was the longest hitless streak for a position player in MLB history. He'd suffered a lot to reach this point. He wanted to at least savor the moment it finally ended. Davis added two doubles later in the game, finishing the day three for five. He also went yard in the series finale, ending a 35 game homerless stretch. By breaking down some of the noteworthy moments, we can appreciate just how remarkable this streak was. But now it's time to dig deeper. Now it's time to prove just exactly why this streak was one in a million. Chris Davis's 0 for 54 can be broken down into 30 strikeouts and 24 batted balls. One of those batted balls was a fielder's choice he reached safely on, so we'll toss it out. That leaves 23 hit opportunities to be examined. According to StatCast, the top five most likely hits from this stretch were the ground out to Greg Bird, which had a 600 expected batting average, the deep fly out to Brett Gardner, which had a 667 expected batting average, the line out to Billy McKinney, which had a 680 expected batting average, the line out to Glaber Torres, which had a 913 expected batting average, and finally, the weird knuckling line out to Eduardo Nunez, which had a whopping 960 expected batting average. I know it might not look that way, but that's the type of batted ball that almost always lands behind the infielders and in front of the outfielders for a single. Already, the odds of missing out on all those hits are low, but when all 23 batted balls are integrated, it produces an astonishing result. Every time Chris Davis shook his head after an unlucky out has led up to this moment. According to expected batting average, the odds of Davis smacking those 23 batted balls without a hit was 0.0001%, aka one in a million. Even though he spent much of the streak striking out, the total absence of batting average on balls in play luck is what made the 0 for 54 possible. So how does this expected batting average business even work? The two main components are launch angle and exit velocity. For example, the line out to Glaber Torres was hit 109.2 miles per hour with a launch angle of 12 degrees. In the StatCast era, this combination of launch angle and exit velocity produces a hit about 91% of the time, so StatCast assigns an expected batting average of .913. And here's the key to the puzzle. Expected batting average does not care about how the fielders are positioned and their proximity to the ball. See, the best hitters are the best because they can manufacture their own luck. Whether it's a high BABIP, high homer to fly ball rate, or a high walk rate powered by a lack of pitches in the strike zone, they consistently succeed in metrics that have an element of luck. But Davis couldn't manufacture Babbitt luck. In fact, 
Defenses were manufacturing Babbitt luck against him with the shift. Here's a fact, Chris Davis is the most shifted against hitter of the entire StatCast era. The logic behind it is pretty simple. If he's gonna hit a homer, he's gonna hit a homer. But if he's gonna hit a ground ball, he's probably gonna pull it. Chris Davis has hit 560 ground balls since 2015, and 58.5% of them were pulled. He's a shift victim, no doubt about it. He goes to a support group meeting every Tuesday with Ryan Howard. It wasn't all shift all the time, though. The most unlikely defensive play made, according to Inside Edge, was actually the Ryan Barucki recovery and throw. And how about that warning track flyout to Brett Gardner? About two-thirds of batted balls with that launch angle exit velo combination leave the yard. You can play the if game all day. If he pulled it a little more, if the wind was blowing out, if it was warmer outside, but none of these ifs ever happened. Not for 54 at bats. See, what made the streak of futility resonate is that we've all been there. We've all been down on our luck. And eventually, the same baseball fans who booed him during the opening homestand began to cheer instead. At some point, the jeers turned to cheers. Don't believe me? Check out the noise level on this Jonathan VR flyout. One down the right field line. There's left center field. This ball has a chance in the gap, but running it down is Grossman. Nicely done after a fourth straight inning. Little bit of intrigue. Now watch Chris Davis do the exact same thing. Center field. Loriano is back on it. Appears to have a play. He does. And he's got it for the out. See? The Baltimore faithful began to experience the same Babbitt frustrations as Davis, and a little empathy can go a long way. It wasn't just Orioles fans either. The best thing to come out of this stretch was a nine-year-old Red Sox supporter who penned Davis a letter of encouragement, writing, The way you play baseball has absolutely nothing to do with how good a person you are. Everyone goes through a slump. Don't give up. We're rooting for you. Months after the streak ended, Davis finally got a chance to thank his young pen pal in person when the Orioles returned to Fenway. Truth be told, the stakes weren't very high. Davis had already hit his guaranteed payday and his organization was uncompetitive with or without him. He began the streak on an Orioles team that won 47 games. He ended it on a team that won 54. When you think about it, he'd already bought himself plenty of goodwill with the fans in Baltimore. After all, he had been good in an Orioles uniform before, which is something that couldn't be said about much of their roster. Davis's sharp decline mirrored the sharp decline of the franchise itself. The Orioles thrice made the playoffs in the early 2010s, only to begin a total rebuild at the end of the decade. Davis, meanwhile, led all of MLB in home runs for a five-year stretch between 2012 and 2016. Ultimately, Chris Davis is what I would call a tightrope player. These are players that embrace their extreme profiles to great success, which becomes a death-defying balancing act. And there's no shame in being a tightrope player. Davis is no different from the reliever that's elite when he throws 101 and bad when he throws 98. But when a tightrope player stumbles just a little bit, they fall a long way. The three true outcome approach from Davis is hardly unique in the modern game, but his inability to hit velocity was an interesting wrinkle. Davis has been below average against fastballs 95 miles per hour or higher throughout his career, even the seasons when he led the league in home runs. The fact that the previous Orioles regime chose to give a $161 million contract to a tightrope player can't be held against Davis. But thanks to the magic of deferred money, he'll be getting paid until 2037. Yet, throughout the 0 for 54, nobody questioned if the slugger had given up. Nobody wondered if he was resigned to collect the paycheck and never get a hit again. Baseball fans all over the world experienced the cruelty of the game, nay, the human condition through Davis. And because of this, his legacy will be defined not just by his greatness on the baseball diamond, but also by the grace with which he handled hardship. So here's to you, Chris Davis. Whether you're 0 for 50 or hitting your 50th home run, 
You made our lives better. You know what else will make your life better? NordVPN. That's called a segue, folks. Hey, baseball fans, sick of those local blackouts on MLB TV? Let's say you're a Dodgers fan in Los Angeles. Simply choose a server in New York and you can watch the home team. In fact, their virtual private network has 5,400 servers in 59 countries, so why not use Nord to expand your other streaming capabilities? Field of Dreams is on Netflix Canada and The Naturals on Netflix Netherlands, but NordVPN lets you surf the web without borders. It also lets you surf securely behind a wall of next-gen encryption, and that goes for six devices, whether it be your laptop, tablet, or phone. If any of that sounds good, you can get a deep discount at nordvpn.com slash foolishbaseball. Not only will you get free bonus months on a two-year deal, it's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Again, that's nordvpn.com slash foolishbaseball.